my brothers and sisters in Islam, you and I know that in our lives, we go through a lot. Health matters. Sometimes we run from doctor to doctor, literally pillar to post. We struggle sometimes with our health. Sometimes financially, we happen to face so much of difficulty that we think to ourselves, when is this going to end? How long am I going to continue struggling in this way? And it becomes a battle sometimes from riches to rags and sometimes the opposite may happen. But we'd like to concentrate on the difficulties that people face. You and I know that things are becoming expensive. We hear about the dollar going down, the rand going down, etc. Prices going up. Very rarely do we hear of prices coming down. A lot of the times my experience is when they want to raise the price of fuel, they actually drop it to make you feel like something good happened. So they drop it by 50 cents, only to find out one month later that they raised it by a whole rand. So it was to make you feel good. Or sometimes they raise it by a rand and drop it by 50 cents. Effectively, they've raised it, but in a way that you were okay with it. But we never hear of it coming down in a way that it hasn't gone up or going further down. Two or three price drops all at once. A lot of the times when a difficulty strikes, it's not just one. One and it's followed by another one and it's followed by a third one. Hardship. Imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful, the most kind, the most compassionate. And yet we are struggling. Subhanallah. This is what a weak person might look at. He might start thinking, how come Allah is so merciful, but I can't make ends meet. I'm struggling to put a plate of food for my children and my family members. And how come I'm looking for a job, but I haven't found one. And why is it that I'm trying to pay my debt, but I cannot. Sometimes we have family problems, difficulties in the house. We are trying to solve a matter in the family and we simply cannot. Someone, somehow, somewhere is just so stubborn. They either don't want to own up, they don't want to apologize, they don't want to change their ways, or we play the blame game. Each one says, he was wrong, she was wrong, and this one says, no, she was wrong, he was wrong, and the problem does not get resolved in a lot of cases. So, we go through so much of difficulty and hardship in that regard as well. In the community, we have issues. This man, the other man, that auntie, the other sister, etc. This organization, that community, this masjid, the other masjid, those trustees, these ones, problems, difficulties. And it's so bad because as Muslimin, we would have thought that perhaps when we have more than one Islamic organization, they would cooperate. Rather, nowadays, it's like a business. It's like, how did you open a business similar to mine? Well, hang on, the duty of da'wah is everybody's. It's not just yours or mine. It's different from a business. In fact, even if it were business, a true believer would not be angry and upset if a similar business opened across the road. I take you to the Middle East or to China for that matter. When you want to buy electronics, you enter a market where there are 2,000 shops, all electronics. What happened to them? They were not mu'minin. But look at how they don't mind because they know that if there is a whole city known as electronic city, at least the world is going to come here. Perhaps they will come to me. With us, you have an electronic store and you hear that a kilometer down the line, there is another one and suddenly your little qiyamah has come. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Where is the iman? But it is a problem, a problem in the sense that we have sleepless nights because of this. Then we hear of the politics across the globe. We cannot deny that it affects us. It affects us because it's happening to our brothers and sisters. People are dying. They don't know why they are dying. People are killing. They don't know why they are killing. It's a prophecy of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says there will come a time, لا يدري القاتل في مقتل ولا المقتول في مقتل. There will come a time as a sign of the hour that the one 
killing won't know why he's doing it. Perhaps just an instruction or he's just feeling good about it. Look at what's happening in the States. Every other day you hear of a sporadic shooting. I'm not talking of Muslims. Sporadic. Someone perhaps mental, someone perhaps uh, whatever else it was driven by racism, driven by hate, etc. Coming forth and shooting. Who? Random people anywhere and everywhere. Why? He doesn't know. And why were those murdered murdered? They don't know either. That was prophesied by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So it affects us and it bothers us because number one, part of the Muslim ummah. Number two, humanity at large. We care for humanity too. Many people say the Muslims only care for their ummah and for their type. That is not true. We care for humanity. We are taught to care for the dogs and the cats and the animals as well. We are taught to care for the ecosystem as well. The difficulty is, if there was a dog drowning and a human being drowning, you had to prioritize as a Muslim to save the human being and perhaps thereafter hope that the dog is still okay, that you can actually go and save it. But you cannot say, I'm a Muslim. People are saying we only care for our ummah. Let me save the dog. You cannot say that because in that case, you were foolish. It's a human being. It's life. This is why the Quran says clearly, وَمَنْ أَحْيَاهَا فَكَأَنَّمَا أَحْيَا النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا Whoever saves a single life is equivalent to one who has saved humanity because you care. That's what it is. You have shown you're part of a huge family. But still, we feel that the Islamophobia across the globe is unfair. It is a very small group of people perhaps who do things in the name of religion that affects us negatively sometimes. But the bulk of us, 99.99 .99 and beyond percent of the Muslimin, they have contributed positively or they are trying at least to lead their lives in a normal way. They have their own struggles. Didn't I just say we all have either financial, economical, meaning uh, social struggles, perhaps health, etc., etc. So many things. We go through our own problems, but we're trying our best. We're not affecting people negatively. Wherever we can, we are trying to reach out to them. But they look at us with this eye, this eye of suspicion, doubt. You see a Muslim, suddenly everyone turns around. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. My brothers, my sisters, there are many messages I wish to deliver today. I want to start with one thing. Never lose your identity. Be proud of who you are. Don't decide, right, I'm no longer going to you know, dress like a person I'm supposed to as a Muslim, as modest as I'm supposed to. Time for salah. It's okay. There's all these people watching. I can't do it anymore. Allah is most forgiving, most merciful. That's the reason why people think that those who are religious are bad because we become too few in the eyes of the people. Too few. We're doing it for the sake of Allah. But when people whom you interact with on a daily basis realize you're a good Muslim who prays five times a day, who's actually fulfilling whatever Allah wants him or her to fulfill, eating halal, ensuring that you know you're modest, you are clean, you are upright, you are moral, you are not vulgar. That's when they realize, you know what, actually the Muslims are the best of people. But the difficulty is we want to hide it. I'm not saying we've become bad, but sometimes we give up certain things, you know. We're too shy to admit that I only eat halal. Take a look at others. They'll tell you we only eat kosher and that's it. And we are stricter than any one of you. That's what they've said. I've had a few discussions with some of uh, the Jewish people and subhanallah hats off to the fact that they are so strict sometimes with this matter of kosher that I feel to myself that perhaps we need to learn a thing or two regarding strictness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. So politically then we have the wars that are happening. The wars that are happening, unfair, politically motivated in most cases. And who is struggling and suffering? The Muslims. And it's made to look like we're the bad ones. Yet if you look at the root of the problem, wallahi you will find it. It does not lie with the Muslims. If you look at the root of a lot of the problems and the wars and the fighting and the killing, those who are honest enough to face facts will confirm that it wasn't the Muslims. Subhanallah. People started this. Now, 
When you start something, you need to know it will have an effect, an impact, skittle effect. Sometimes you won't be able to control where it goes. But who started it? Don't blame me. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. We are now trying to resolve a matter that you created. We are now trying to resolve a problem, an issue. We are trying to contain that which is an inferno that is raging. And who started the fire? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection. May Allah make it easy for us. So it's frustrating. Everyone is frustrated because we see what's happening in Palestine, for example, for ages. The oppression. So much is happening, we can't even talk about it. It's not just a topic on its own. It's a lifetime to discuss. And it's been happening since most of us in this masjid were born. We've known about it. Frustration upon frustration. Every year you hear about, you know, this killing and people fighting. Why? And then we look like the bad ones. And then history, what people try and do is, they try and change history to make it seem to the world that what is happening today is actually the fault of the Muslimin. Subhanallah. Conveniently, the Muslims will also, some of them who don't know, and they're not prepared to go back into history to see what exactly took place. They will say, yeah, that's right, that's right. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. May Allah forgive us and our shortcomings. We need to remember and we need to learn. You need to know your history. You need to know where it started, why it started. Why is it that this is happening? The issue of Palestine is at the heart of every Muslim. Not just Palestine. Take a look at how the Middle East has been completely destroyed. And people blame every one of us. Yes, it is true that we are to blame for the infighting. We are. But take a look at the trigger. How did it trigger? Where did it go? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to resolve these matters. With all this frustration, you have unilateral announcements suddenly. This is the capital. It's like saying Harare is the capital of China. And the whole world says, wow, yes, great. It is. Wow, you look like a fool. Subhanallah. Harare, the capital of China. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. So it's important for us to know why is it? Why is it that this is bothering the whole Muslim ummah? But my brothers and sisters, I want to tell you, in this frustration, we can do two or three things. We can either sit and forget about it and not do anything about it. That's not a good mu'min. Number two, we can either do things that make matters worse. Worse meaning you start hitting innocent people around because you're venting your frustration. So you decide, you know, every Jewish person is my enemy. That's not true. That's not true. A lot of the Jewish people support the Muslim stand. I'm sure you may have seen that. Every Christian person out there deserves to be harmed. That's not true. So don't think that by you venting your frustration in the wrong way, you're going to be helping the ummah. Instead, you're going to be making matters worse. You have to understand it's our duty to explain this. However, my brothers and sisters, a group from amongst us, and we need to make sure that the majority of us are in that group, if not every single one of us. According to the level that Allah has given you, you need to do something about it. If Allah has given you political clout, whereby you are in authority somewhere across the globe, a world leader, you're a Muslim, you have a greater responsibility than those below because you have that power, that position to be able to voice something in a way or do something about it sometimes that might even solve the whole problem by the help of Allah. But I can tell you another fact. Don't we feel let down by political leadership who are Muslims? We feel let down. It creates another frustration. So what can you and I do? People say, well, I didn't hear you write anything about it on Facebook, for example. Okay. That's a very interesting observation. Because if you boil down the solution to putting something up on Facebook, then I think you've actually missed the plot. You actually have. Yes, it is very important to create the awareness. Yes, we should and we must. But remember, each one of us deals with it in a different way. It doesn't mean that what I did 
if it was different from what you did, then I am wrong. Perhaps you did something more than, more than I did, and I don't know. And guess what? Many of us get so frustrated that our iman becomes weak. Wallahi. And you don't realize your iman is actually flying away. And you're so frustrated thinking I'm a good Muslim because you know what happens? We belittle the solutions of the Quran. That is the word of Allah. When Allah tells you you've got a problem, do X, Y, and Z. And when we have the problem, we're doing A, B, and C. Our iman is actually becoming weak without realizing, can I tell you why? Why? How many of us cry at the time of the hajjud making dua for the ummah? How many of us? I don't even want to ask you to show hands because I know it will be a minority. Let's face facts. Yet that is a powerful solution. The Prophet ﷺ used to get up every morning. He used to cry for the ummah. We say dua. Dua, the Quran talks about dua. The Quran talks about sabr. The Quran talks about developing your taqwa to solve a problem in New Zealand. Well, New Zealand is not mentioned in the Quran, but what I mean is somewhere else in the world. Solve that problem. You need to develop your taqwa to start with. You need to develop your sabr. You need to think about it. You need to discuss it. You need to use whatever capacity Allah has given you to do what you believe is the most you could have done. So every one of us, we pass the buck. What did you do? Brother, what did you do? What I did, inshallah, I'll try my best in my capacity. Whatever I can. You may not know my capacity. I may not know yours. Sometimes from amongst us, there are people who are quiet, sitting in one corner. They are so, so close to Allah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses their effort to resolve massive problems. And we don't even know. Aren't we mu'mineen? Don't we believe that from amongst us, there are those who are close to Allah whom we don't recognize? I recall visiting a Middle Eastern country recently and in the masjid, there was a security guard. He was from Africa and he was sitting there very, very early. We had gotten in quite early and he was sitting there early and he was busy reading his Quran. And I told the brother next to me, I said, brother, I want to meet this man. Something about him told me this guy is, you know, he's on another level. Obviously, I may be wrong. <laughs> You need to be one to recognize one. But at the same time, it's a feeling you get in your heart that, you know, this brother is genuine. He is really someone who's trying. No one would think a security guard standing out there even deserves to come and read Salat al-Jum'ah. May Allah forgive us. Sometimes we have people who work for us who are Muslimin and we don't cater for them for Salat. Then we want our problems to be resolved. Everything I was talking about. And we don't realize that was your little test. Allah put it there for you. So this brother later on, I, I couldn't meet him because after Salah, he, he went away. Probably he went back to his, wherever he was guarding. But I told the brother, I said, please meet him and convey him my regards. And meet him every time you see him. He said, this man is at the masjid all the time. He's there for every Salah. Or whenever he is on duty, somewhere nearby, he's at that masjid for Salah. And I'm thinking to myself, this possibly could be someone who's very, very close to Allah. Who knows? Allah knows. But for us, we don't even respect each other. Not even each other. Would you greet someone for no reason besides the fact that you're a mu'min? You have nothing in common besides the fact that you have the shahada, which is the most powerful thing you could ever have in common, even though it's only one thing. A lot of us, we greet lil ma'rifah because I know you. Hey, Islam, how's it? How's it? What's happening? Another thing is you see a nice, the new Tesla come in and you say, hey, that uncle, salikum uncle, how's it? Because you want a free ride in there. That's all. Or at least you want to be associated with that. I might be giving you a simple example, but it's a fact. You see a powerful figure, a wealthy figure, a popular figure. It becomes more important for you to greet. I want you to make sure that you live as an ummah. My starting with myself as an ummah. Wallahi, we are one family. Everything that may have happened in our lives in the past has to remain there. We have hope in the mercy of Allah, no matter what. And I want to read for you a few verses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَتُبْلَوُنَّ فِي أَمْوَالِكُمْ وَأَنفُسِكُمْ You will be tested in a very, very big way in your wealth and in your, within yourselves. Allah says, we will throw the tests at you one after the other. That's what life is all about. Life is all about being tested. From the beginning, there are problems up to death. 
When you, are at, when you die, they say, intaqala ila rahmatillah. This person has reached the rahmah of Allah. That's what we say. Why? Because now there's no more. It's over. If you, if you went through all the suffering properly as a mu'min, you have eternal success and bliss. May Allah grant that to us. So don't think life is going to be easy. No, life is a challenge from the beginning right to the end. You may never see a day when your health is restored. Perhaps Allah wants to take you away in that condition. But don't lose hope because to die with hope is a sign of Iman. Who did I have hope in? In Allah. Doctors might have given up, but I have hope in Allah. That's your Iman. Like I said, people say, look at the problems on the globe. What hope do we have? I always say there is lots of hope. Sometimes something appearing negative is the most positive thing that could have ever happened. But we don't see the light. Our Iman is dwindling. That's why we lose hope. Never lose hope. We are a family. No matter who you are, we may have our differences. We come from different races, different backgrounds. Wallahi, we are a family. And passionately and truly, I say, if you have hatred in your heart for another, it's you who is sick. It's you who is sick. You need to change that. You need to learn to love people. Today, very unfortunately, small differences within opinion. We cannot respect them, number one. Number two is we start hating. We dislike a person. I don't want to talk to him. Why? You know what? He does this and he does this. For what? We have our own weaknesses. We have our differences, etc. No problem. If differences were meant to make us be separate today, the, as what is happening, the ummah would be in pieces. Subhanallah. We have to keep on having hope and keep on asking yourself, what should I do? Let's complete that verse. Allah says, you will hear a lot of abusive statements from the people of the book before you and from the those who associate partners with Allah, meaning from people who don't believe, from the non-Muslims, you will hear a lot of abusive speech, a lot of that which is not correct against you, whether it is vulgar, whether it is false, accusation, everything. Allah says, you will hear it. Let us It means definitely, definitely you are going to keep on hearing that. Where is this verse? Surat Ala Imran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِن تَصْبِرُوا وَتَتَّقُوا فَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ مِنْ عَزْمِ الْأُمُورِ Simple solution, but our Iman doesn't want that solution. What's the solution? Allah says, if you bear sabr and you develop your taqwa, that's the best thing you could do. In the face of someone who says something against you, vulgar, accusation, anything bad, the Quran is telling you sabr and taqwa is your best bet. Allahu Akbar. But like I said, our iman is so weak, we believe that the sabr and taqwa actually will do nothing. That's where we've got to at the moment. You say, how long are we going to have sabr for? Why? Sabr. Have sabr right now and have it for as long as it takes. Then what do we do? That does not mean that you don't protect yourself. That does not mean that you don't defend yourself. That does not mean that you don't do something within what Allah has permitted to resolve the matter. For example, a thief comes in. We have so many carjackings, hijackings, etc. So may Allah protect us all. We have murders that are happening on a daily basis in this country, in so many other countries from thieves, from people who may be not religiously motivated or politically motivated, but just simple crime. It's happening. Does that mean sabr and taqwa? Hang on, just leave it. It's okay. No, you follow it up. You need to make sure you've covered your home. You try to hunt who was that. Try and make sure that they are penalized or they are caught, etc., etc. Or at least the minimum you could do is save yourself, protect yourself, do something. Have the CCTV or whatever else. Not because that is going to actually save you ultimately, but it's part of what Allah has asked you to do. It's part of what Allah has asked you to do. So therefore, you will do it. So Allah says, Sabr and Taqwa. There is another verse in the Quran, also in Surah Al-Baqarah, where Allah speaks about how He's going to test every one of us with a bit of fear, with loss of wealth, with loss of your health, with matters in your lives, within yourselves, etc. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, whoever bears patience, indeed, those are the successful. Give good news to those who bear patience. وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ Give good news to those who are patient in this regard. 
And then I want to end with three verses of Surah Al-Talaq, very important verses. Many of us feel we are trapped, either in our personal capacities, our personal lives, trapped in the sense that you've got a marital problem, you've got a health problem, you've got a financial problem, some form of an issue within some circle of your own, and you feel that you're trapped. Allah is telling you never to lose hope. Continue trying and a day will come. You make sure you, will, you do your bit. Allah will do his bit. Remember that. You keep on having faith. Listen to what Allah says. For as long as you are prepared to develop your taqwa, your consciousness of Allah, your relationship with Allah, Allah says, whoever develops that taqwa, I will open a way out for them from a place that they never ever thought it would open from. Allah says, I will grant them rizq. Sustenance is not only wealth, but it includes wealth. It's all your whole life is sust sustenance. Who you marry is also sustenance. Your life is sustenance. Whatever Allah has provided for you is sustenance. Allah says, we will sustain you from a place you never dreamt of, you never imagined. A verse down, Allah says, Whoever is conscious of Allah, the minimum that Allah will do is to make matters easy for you. You might struggle, you might go through the struggle, but you will be content, you will be happy, you will be okay with what Allah has chosen for you. That's the minimum to say the minimum. Otherwise, Allah will create even greater ease, which is also included in the same verse. So the moral of it is develop our taqwa. Every time we hear, ittaqullah, 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 but we take it for granted. The hope we have in Allah is connected closely to your taqwa. How can I want Allah to help me when I haven't helped what He has asked me to do? Allah's assistance will come to those who fulfill what Allah has asked them to fulfill. And keep on going. There is another verse in the Quran where Allah says, Am hasibetum an tadkhulul jannah. Long verse. Allah says, Do you really think you're going to go to paradise when the tests that came to those before you have not yet come to you? Masathumul baqsa wa darra. War came to them. Harm came to them. They were struggling with health matters and problems and plagues and so many other difficulties. They were shaken completely until the messengers from amongst them said, when is the help of Allah going to come? And Allah says, you continue in your taqwa. Allah inna nasrallahi qareeb. Indeed, the help of Allah is very near, nearer than you think it is. Have hope. My brothers and sisters, these problems across the globe, they shall be solved by the mercy of Allah. But let's play our bit. By developing our link with Allah, Allah says, "Inna Allah la yughayru ma bi qawmin hatta yughayru ma bi anfusihim." Allah will not change the condition of a nation for as long as the people themselves do not individually change themselves. How do you want it? And we say, "No, that's not fair." People are still in the clubs. People cannot give up their bad habits. People are still on drugs. People are still gambling. People are still committing adultery. People cannot quit sin for the sake of Allah. People cannot even dress appropriately for the sake of Allah. And we want massive matters of the ummah to be resolved. And when someone tells us this is the first step, we say, go to hell. Who are you? You ulama, you just stand in the front and tell us, get close to Allah, get close to Allah. There are real matters on the ground. I've heard people tell that to me. That's why I say it's a sign of weakness of Iman. Excuse those, keep on trying, keep on talking to them, keep on instilling that hope. The verse, the third verse, Allah says, and that is in Surah Al Talaq. Whoever is going to develop his or her consciousness of Allah and closeness to Allah and the piety levels, Allah says, even if that problem is not solved the way you want it to be solved, we will subtract your sins, expiate them, swap them into something good. Allah says, we will cancel your sins. And you know what? We will expand and make grand your reward. You will have a great reward for the sabr that you bore. That sabr is from Allah. My brothers and sisters, a lot has been said. My time is actually up. 
I hope and I pray that what I've said today can help me develop the love I have for every single one. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all to develop our link with Allah in a way that really we feel what has been said in the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be true solutions for the problems that we face. May Allah strengthen our leaders. May Allah strengthen our ulama. May Allah strengthen the political leaders across the globe to do something about what is bothering us as an ummah, whereby we feel so frustrated and so let down. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and help us. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina Muhammad. Iqra kitab Allah tarq jinanahu wa tanal azim al-ajri wal-ghufrani Rattilhu rawi al-qalb min nafahatihi kalmai yurui lahfata al-achani